the Luca criticism, what you guys said, I think it was fair to criticize him for game three. Yeah. But the criticism became much more than that. It became about can you win with Luca? That became the overarching question after game three. After, <laughs> bless you, bless you. Apologize, thank you. After he had led a team to the finals at 25 years old, after he's been to two conference finals in the past three seasons with two different rosters, and he's played great in the finals. I mean, he's game three was the only game that I look at it. I'm like, he didn't play. He didn't I didn't play think he great. was great games one and two. I thought he was great. First three quarters. He, in the fourth quarter, he got gassed out. There's no doubt. But he kept the Mavericks in the game. Which, which game were we talking about? One and two? Games, I think, overall, when you look at the entirety of the series. Luke had an awesome third quarter in game one. I think Luca has played great in this series, like overall. I think he's played great. I think he's played below his standards. Given the Celtics roster and what they're able to do defensively against Luca, the efficiency may not be the norm for Luca, where he's shooting forty seven percent from the field, twenty five percent from three. I mean, the, and for the, the free throw line, he's been terrible. The three point yeah. shot is what's most shocking to me. I believe one for seven in game three, zero oh for eight last night. Didn't really matter. They won by a hundred, but we haven't seen him be the normal efficient Luca that we've seen all season long. I think that there's been quarters that we've really seen him be great. Joel's been mentioning this the last couple of times we've been talking about it, but it's the truth. Last night, obviously, is the exception. Dallas Mavericks were just at a different level, but game three. Game one that really stick out. He was great in quarter three, game one, and game game three, first he had quarter. a great first quarter, and the rest of the game, he was not good. If you want to say he hasn't been Luka, I agree. Mm -hmm. but for, Which is his standard. For, yeah, but for 99.9% .9 of the NBA, this this is great. Like but, yeah, that's, but when you're elite... We're not comparing Luka to Jordan Poole. And when, no, <laughs> no, we're, ta we're talking about how... <laughs> we're talking how, about the top exactly. one. We're talking okay, about the okay. Luka. Well, then let me and the this. conversations we had prior to the series of what a championship would do to him yes. and in terms of legacy, there's obvious expectation and there's standards that you have to hold when you're trying to surpass... Uh, Allen Iverson, James Harden, Kawhi Leonard in terms of legacy conversations. There's no doubt he's been the best player in the series, though. Yeah, I mean, I just no one on Boston's really. JB's probably been the best say, player. JB's the closest, but, but even and that's still, a pretty that's pretty that's a gap. Yeah, like no, I mean, yeah, Luca, obviously, Luca has been. By, no, I know. Like as a player, yes, uh -huh. I know it's a gap. But I'm saying in the series, Luca has been by far the best player in the series. Yeah, I mean. I don't think anyone on Boston has really stood out. I think JB's been the best player for them, especially what he's been able to do defensively. I think he's been the toughest matchup outside of Al Horford uh, for for Luca. But no one on Boston has really stepped up to the moment. I thought really, I thought game three or excuse me, game four. I thought Tatum was going to step up. I thought you're up three zero, kind of that pressure's off your back, like. Even though you haven't won the championship, the pressure's kind of off your back. Maybe play a little bit looser. I thought Tatum was really going to step up. And, I mean, he had, what, 15 points? He played less than 30 minutes. But even still, like, to me in that first quarter, Tatum was really the only one able to do anything offensively. And you look at the box where it's like he, he scored 15 points in the game. Of course, he sat, like, the majority of the second half. But nobody on Boston has really been on Luka's level. I agree with that. But I also think that Luka... Be say it again? He could be better. Yeah, I think Luka can be better... Defend, this is the thing about Luka, right? And I'm going to talk about this in uh, this week in the NBA slash NFL in terms of like superstar weaknesses. But Luka is never going to be an elite defender. Number one, I don't think he should be because he has such a load offensively that you're never. He's never going to be a defender where you're like, we want to put him on the best player for 48 minutes. Like that just doesn't make sense for like schematically. But it's always just been effort, especially in Game Three. It's been effort. It's been complaining. You don't have to be a great defender. Luca's not a great defender. Mm -hmm. But if you could give me effort and you could shut up to the refs, which he did to his credit in game four, that's all I got to ask for. And I thought a lot of times, even though the blow by rate and stuff like that, I don't, I agree with you that I think it, some of it can be a little bit, a little bullshitty because schematically things change and, and how you want to funnel players. But I also think for Jason Kidd, those first two, three games, it's not really working. The 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 method for Boston has been, we're going to attack Luka, yep. we're going to get into the paint, we're going to kick, and we're going to get you in rotation. Yep. Boston never really changed it up the first three. Even the, this fourth game, I think, uh, um, I don't, I just don't think they did it as much or as effectively more than anything else that Dallas did. But that's been the method for Boston. And just the first three games, it worked out. So if Luka can just give me this level of effort, and stop the complaining, that's all I really am asking for. I'm not asking him to go out there and be Drew Holiday. I'm not asking him to go out there and be and be Jalen Brown because he just 
athletically, I don't know if he's those guys defensively. But if he's going to give me the effort, he's going to stop the complaining, that's really all I could ask for for him. But I think he only complains when the whistle's terrible. I, I do think the whistle on him has been terrible these finals. Game four, he got a good whistle. But game three, we saw in the first quarter, Drew Holiday smacked his smacked his entire forearm, yeah. and it wasn't called. I mean, there have been things like that that have happened. I get the, it, bro, Down the stretch of game the three. The, man, back like, to, the back-to-back step-back threes that he had where he, he fell validated. down and he didn't come back on defense, I think those were good no-calls. But yeah, for sure. One of, one of those two not being a call, it, they were kind of up in the right, air. Neither of them were fouls. You... Down the stretch of game three, where he has the dumb fouls in transition. He One, he gets, he gets bailed out after the spe- Brown spearing Jalen Brown, yeah. no call. Jason Tatum ends up getting the ball. I forget how that possession ends, but I know it didn't automatically lead to a transition bucket. But then you go and you foul out. You're screaming at the bench. You better fucking challenge that. It's like that was an, like moments where we just see him make blatant mistakes. You're going, you're you're egregiously fouling. But on the opposite side, yeah, your your game is predicated on going, getting downhill, getting into the paint, and and finding buckets that way. Naturally, you're gonna get fouled. He's still gotten a, a let me not say this series. He hasn't gotten as many whistles, but that's NBA playoffs. That's the playoffs. He's Naturally, the whistle goes down a, a night. Which honestly, for playoff standards, that's still a good amount. Where does where did you have the rest of the numbers? Because I don't think anyone has gone to the line a ton this series. No, not I right. think I think on both sides there's been missed calls. Like I just think although the refs have missed and allowed a lot of stuff and the bullshit where if it goes in it's not a foul, if it misses it is a foul, it, it's just it's just so stupid and so ridiculous. But in the NBA finals, I understand it's frustrating, especially when you get hacked at times like that Drew Holiday one, a hundred percent. But you got to have that mindset of like, I'm not going to get a foul call. Complaining to the refs is not going to change it. No. Like, it maybe it makes you feel better in the moment because you can let out that anger. But they're not going to change the call. Be like, you know what, Luca, you're complaining. You're right. Let me go back and change this. When you're in the NBA Finals, and especially in that Game Three where it comes down to a one-two point game with three minutes left, like you just think about possession after possession. Where if he doesn't complain, if he gets up and gets back on defense, like you do that two or three times instead of being down one, you could be up four or five in that fourth quarter. I agree. I think uh, there are, there are flaws to him, just like any of player. Course, yeah. um, there are flaws to him. You can't be of great course. at everything. No, you can't. There's going to be a weakness somewhere. And looking at the Minnesota That's series. Wrong. He got to the, these are the free throw attempts by game. Against Minnesota, game one, seven, game two, seven, game three, 10, game four, 12, and then to close out game five, he had three free throws. In the finals, game one, he had five free throws. Game two, he had eight. Game three, he had four. And then game four, he had seven. That's I mean, fine. That doesn't seem like a crazy drastic difference. Yeah. Like, There's, I, like, if you came into this postseason expecting the, the regular season whistle to, to carry over. They showed us the second half of the season. Yeah. Regular season whistle is not going to happen. You, welcome oh, welcome to your first time yeah. watching basketball. Because yeah. that's just how NBA playoffs are. We watch the best brand of basketball this time of the season because they allow the players to be physical. Uh, to an extent, I agree. There should be moments where if it's a clear foul, you call it. But we, like you mentioned on both sides, there have been missed calls. The one that comes to mind, I feel like anytime I need anything about Celtics, I just go to his Twitter. You have the the <laughs> one with um, with Jalen Brown, like I already mentioned, where Luka goes and dives at him, didn't get a call. But then Jason Tatum goes for a dunk, and P.J. Washington just smacks his arm, and he doesn't get a call there, too. It's just the, it's both sides, the whistle has not been great. But to me, that's fine. You're letting the players play. And that's exactly what we want to see ultimately. And I just like, not that you're doing this by any means. Um, and I know Mavs uh, or MFFL Nation, uh, shout, to, shout to bro. I don't know if he was being serious about this or if he was just getting a shit off. Big Mavs fan. Of course, everyone follows him on Mavs Twitter there. That's a legend. I just don't want it to become the Mavs are down 3-0 because of the refs. That That's where I'm sitting here. I'm like, it's a 3-0 series. It's very difficult for me to be like, you know what? You're right. If, if you would have got called X, Y, and Z, you would be up 3-0. You'd be up 2-1. Shit, it'd be 2-1. Like, that's where I get every lost game, fast. you can name 10, 15, 30 plays that should have gone this way or should have gone that way. The Revs are going to miss calls. They're going to miss some egregious calls, and they're going to miss some ticky-tacky calls. But at the end of the day, you go down 3-0. I don't want to hear a referee excuse. I think there's like team by team. You could look at what Boston is doing and what Dallas is doing and say there's a lot more reasons why from a basketball perspective rather than a referee perspective. Yeah, it's very really easy. Uh, the Mavericks have not hit a shot. 
Like their their shot making has been extremely inconsistent. Not just from, of course, the two stars and Luca and Kyrie, who obviously stand out, but PJ's not hitting at that efficient rate. Derek Jones suddenly now is gone completely offensively. These have been the two guys that have been some of the most consistent players for the Mavericks in this postseason run. But when you're going up against a far superior opponent, they make it a lot difficult on you. And we're seeing that not only out of the two stars, particularly Kyrie Irving, who thankfully the last two games has played better basketball, but the role players who helped you get to this point aren't playing that great. Obviously, you're not going to play well. Boston is up because they've been better. I mean, I think that's true. I also think that there have been calls and timely moments of the game that Dallas hasn't got. Like game two, when PJ was in transition, could have gone down to a two point game. I agree with that. Jalen Brown pushes him, and that's not a foul. And I think, you know, the Celtics could very well still win that game, even if that is called a foul. But I think it's a moment like that where it's crucial, it's really important, and you're called, you're not, it's, it's not called at all. I, I look back to game three where Kyrie's bringing up the ball and PJ sets a screen on Drew, and it's called uh, an illegal screen. And I thought that was a 50-50 play. You know, you could have not called it. Based on the physicality of that game, I don't think that should have been called. And it's just been timely possessions here and there where I think the whistle hasn't benefited them. Now, it, the whistle could have benefited them in those moments, and they could have still ended up losing. I just think the issue becomes giving them a chance to get that because it's an offensive possession in a close game. Those are always important. But I, I think... uh Game four was just a version of the Mavericks I've been waiting for in the finals and the version I thought we were going to get from game one because up until this recent game, Derek Lively up until game three has had butterfingers. I think Derek Lively has not been himself. He has not played particularly well the first two games of the series. Kyrie Irving was a no-show. The role players in at their shot profiles and their percentages, they've been no-shows. They have been no shows up until this recent game For sure. where they all came out to play. No doubt. So this is the version I thought we were getting. Listen, is there still a chance? I think there still is a chance. I mean, it starts with Monday. You just have to win Monday and you don't got to win. Don't laugh, you don't, you don't got to win. If four you're going to say something, mean it. You don't got to win four in a row. You just got to win one game four times. That's you got to do. Dels, <laughs> I, I just, I, Dels, I got a question for you. What's up? Because, uh, your heart's not beating yet. You know, you're, you're up 3-1. It's a, it's, a good, if it's a good enough lead. Let's just say, for like hypothetical purposes, if the Mavericks win game five, emphatically, like they actually go into Boston. And win they, by 20? They win by like 20, exactly. Mm. Luka starts off in the first quarter, rains fucking five threes in a row. How do you feel going into game six? Uh, right now, my panic meter is like a one out of 10. I don't I They win game that. five. I think it moves up to like a four out of 10. Okay. You win, you lose game six now. We're at 10, out of, 10 yeah. of course, but I'm not, I, I can't sit here and just tweak out yet. Um, like I mentioned, Boston, they, every single time down the road, when adversity hits, even in these playoffs, they've been able to bounce back, whether it's game two against Miami, game two against Cleveland, being down 18 against the Pacers, even being down 13 in game three against Dallas. They've done a great job all season long bouncing back when, when they lose games, when, when leads are away. This is really the first time, this is the first time in a while. I saw them go down big and really not be able to punch back and, and even make it a competitive game. I mean, I don't know the last time we didn't see a competitive game for Boston. Yeah. It's been it's been damn near over a month. You want to look at that maybe Miami game two when they hit like 20-something threes. Um, but the panic meter right now, if you're a Boston fan, you're tweaking out right now. I just don't think you believe in this team. Like, if you're sitting here and being like, Scott's falling, the Mavs are winning in seven, I just don't think you ever actually believe Boston could win the championship. You guys think it ends in five? I'm, I, I think Boston closes out at home. Yes. The last time they won 2008, June 17, 2008. Monday's June 17, 2024. Oh, okay. Boston okay. area code 617. I think Celtics win in five. I think Celtics win in five. And it's funny because, like, in the moment, it's very easy to get, like, worked up into it, especially when you're up 3 0 and you lose that game. It's very easy. Like, everything goes through your mind. It's how you lost. But I guess, but everyone in the world said, Boston, Boston. I shouldn't say everyone in the world, but it was like nobody Boston predicted six, Boston in four. No, no. You know what I mean? Like everyone knew Boston's gonna lose one. You know what I mean? So of course you don't expect to lose by forty. But I also think 
What happens if it's a five-point game, Boston's up five with two minutes left, and they blow a five-point lead, and, Ma- and the Mavericks go on and win by three, and now all of a sudden the clutch thing, it, it changes. It's like, well, Dallas did could have done this a couple of times. They didn't. Now they do. Did something just flip? So I think no matter how Boston would have lost, if it's by 40, if it's by clutch time, I think there's still things people would have pointed out and be like, I don't know. Like, this could change going forward. I just think that... The Mavericks have so little room for error in this series moving forward because of the hole they put themselves in. But I generally do think in game four they found something uh, offensively that they can take advantage of and capitalize for the remaining games, however remaining games there are in this series. We mentioned we haven't gotten a vintage Luka game in this series just yet. So (laughs) could it happen in game five where he drops What exactly did they find? Oh, they they found that they ran their offense much better. I mean, the movement of the ball, the screen setting, the uh, I thought they ran much more Spain pick and rolls. They put the Celtics in much more stressful situations on defense and they just hit their open shots. That's really that's all that you can ask for. If you get good looks, you have to make them. We have not seen the Mavericks make them and Luca other and than Kyrie last night. Well. And they won. It's like, yeah. Pretty simple. You're open. Make your shots. Role players haven't been playing up to the standard we've seen up until last night. And unfortunately, it's a little too late. Kyrie Irving, I don't know if you guys seen the video of after they lost in game two, he went like this to the crowd saying, we're going to see you in game five. I feel 30 coming from Kyrie in game five. I think Kyrie has a good game, too. I think he's been locked in. He's been locked in these last Had couple a of games. Couple, How, oh, couple let, moments me not, in let me not say that actually, because when it comes to playing in in Boston, that brother is not good. <laughs> yeah, he he looked very motivated in that video, and that's what's causing my hope and my. Faith. I just think that he hates Celtics fans, and he was just talking back to him. Oh yeah, no, but I think he's happy that he's going back, and because you know. First two games, he wasn't good. First two games, he wasn't good. So now he got a chance to be excellent in game five and potentially win that game. I think Kyrie Irving, like, he shot poorly in games one and two. In terms of getting to his spots, I thought he got to his spots. I agree. Yeah. He, missed, he missed a lot of open yeah. shots. But th- this is, like, it all ball goes down to this. This is what the NBA is. It's a make or make miss or, league. Yeah, I love that he's really transitioned to becoming a lefty player. Bro really is confident as hell in that lefty runner. Shit, yeah. After you hit that game winner against Denver, I think it's like, all right. For real, though. <laughs> I'm doing this. But, yeah, I had to celebrate after that win. I don't know if I'm going to see another win like that for the season. I might, That might be the last win. Could be. I had to enjoy it, salivate it. Uh, <laughs> I, I love it, man. I love it. One more game, Monday. Just got to win Monday. Monday, if you win Monday, just stay alive. Just give me one more day. Just give me one Shout more to OG, man. day. Just give me one more. Please. It's the know, first time man. for everything. We're, I'm not saying it's going to happen, but one day it will, and we are not going to see it coming. The, one day it, it will. It's going to happen one day, but it's going to happen in the NBA Finals. Who knows? I don't know. You never know where it could happen. I'm not Like I said, I'm not saying it's going to happen this series, uh-huh. but I'm just saying it's going to happen one day. We have no idea where it's going to happen. Mm-hmm. You're right. Because it could happen last happen. year. I think if Tatum doesn't roll his ankle, the Celtics win that game. I don't disagree. Tatum was balling. Yeah, I, I think that they become the first team, and I was the conference finals. Mm-hmm. But they also were a much more talented team. Mm-hmm. And I thought the Heat went up three games to none. They were shooting their ass Quick off. Quick sidebar. Last year's Tatum. Best version of Tatum we've ever seen? Ooh. No, 2022. Even though the finals were bad? The finals were so bad. Ooh.